Hello everyone, welcome to the class. In this video, I am going to explain about asymmetric Arnold reaction. This video is the continuation of previous video, where in the previous video, I have explained about the combination of achiral aldehyde and achiral enolate in Arnold reaction, which produce unequal ratio of diastereomers. Whereas in this video, I am going to explain you about chiral aldehyde and achiral enolate combination to produce unequal ratio of diastereomers in aldol reaction. First of all, let us recap the previous video that is the cross aldol reaction, which is one of the most important methods of CC bond formation, and this reaction generally produces beta hydroxy carbonyl compounds we have observed some issues in this cross aldol reaction they are regio selective enolate formation that means kinetic versus thermodynamic enolate second issue is complete or partial enolation that means the possibility of self condensation or cross condensation and the last issue is stereochemistry of the enolate that means the formation of cis or trans enolate let us discuss the issues one by one the first one is regio selective enolate formation that means kinetic versus thermodynamic enolate So generally, if we take a substrate, for example, take this ketone which is having enolizable alpha proton, treat this one with uh, a base, for example, lithium diisopropyl amide in THF at minus 78 degrees low temperature. Generally, this reaction favors the formation of less substituted enolate. That means this is kinetic enolate. Whereas the same substrate, if you treat with trimethylsilyl chloride with the base that is triethylamine at heating condition a solvent benzene which gives you more substituted enolate this is thermodynamic enolate so the formation of kinetic and thermodynamic enolate is generally depends on different kind of factors they are solvents that means aprotic solvents THF, ether, such kind of solvents generally favor the formation of less substituted enolate that is kinetic enolates and using strong bases like lithium diisopropyl amide which produce kinetic enolate preferably and using oxophilic cations for example lithium such kind of cations which give you the formation of kinetic enolates and the low temperatures generally favors the formation of kinetic enolates whereas polar solvents that means protic solvents generally they prefer thermodynamic enolate formation and weaker bases at higher temperatures also preferably produce thermodynamic enolates so this is the regio selective enolate formation in all all reaction so to control the formation of kinetic and thermodynamic enolate is completely depends on the factors what we are using in the reaction using these reaction conditions we can control the formation of this kinetic and thermodynamic enolates 
second issue is complete or partial annulation that means it reflects the cross condensation complete cross condensation or it can also give you self condensation as we know we have two tautomers of ketones the ketone tautomer generally it is electrophilic whereas enolate tautomer is nucleophilic during the aldol reaction there is a problem generally occurs that is partial enolation of the ketones happens and it may give you the self condensation for example if we take a ketone this ketone generally undergo keto enol tautomerism so this keto tautomer is electrophilic whereas this enol is ambient nucleophilic so here the equilibrium towards right prefers enol formation the equilibrium towards left prefers keto formation so if the less percentage of enol formation takes place then that reaction will give less yield of aldol product so how to control this self condensation in aldol reaction the answer is selection of base use a strong base to avoid this self condensation in aldol reaction for example you can take this lithium diisopropyl amide the choosing of this base selection of the base in this aldol reaction should give the enolate formation completely for example if you have keto so it undergo tautomerism and gives you enolate or if you treat this ketone with the base which gives you enolate so this enolate formation is completely depends on the base what you are using in the reaction the formation of this enolate complete enolate formation is generally depends on the pka value of the base and pka value of the ketone so the pka value between this ketone and base should be always large okay the difference should be large then only this prefers the equilibrium towards right and it gives you enolate formation majorly for example if you take acetone and lithium diisopropyl amide this acetone has pka 20 whereas this lda has pka 38 so the difference between these two pkas are large that is 18 so that one equivalent of lda is enough to deprotonate completely that ketone and prefers the formation of enolate whereas if you take another example like acetone when you treat with the tertiary butanol that means tertiary butoxide which comes from this which is the base of sat the proton the pk value of this acetone is 20 whereas the pk value of this tertiary butanol is 18 so the difference between these two is very less that means 2 so that this reaction generally gives you like 100 is to 1 ratio of keto enol formation so that means 1% of enolate formation only takes place during the aldol reaction so to avoid this issue of self condensation in aldol reaction choosing a strong base will play a key role okay so choosing strong base is very important in aldol reaction coming to the next issue that is stereochemistry of enolates
so let us discuss about stereochemical nomenclature generally we used to give z r e descriptors to assign the configuration for double bonds in this aldol reaction one of the substrates is enolate so this enolate has double bond so we can give the descriptors either z or e we have different kind of enolates ketone esters and amides in this ketone if you observe here if you give preference so this according to preference this enolate gets z enolate whereas in this ester if you give preferences so this enolate gets e enolate whereas in amide amide case you will get z enolate so for different kind of substrates you have different kind of enolates for different kind of enolates you have you have different kind of z as well as e enolates so with this you will get some kind of confusion during the mechanism to avoid this confusion generally we use cis or trans nomenclature in which the metal bond that means in which the o metal bond of the enolate always takes the priority highest that means consider always this o metal bond priority so if the group is if the group is exactly cis to each other then we can consider all these enolates are cis enolates okay the same preferences earlier we get here e enolate whereas now is all enolates are considered as cis enolates whereas this o metal bond is exactly anti to this group so that these all enolates are considered as trans enolates so that we don't get any confusion by classifying these enolates into just a cis and a trans enolates by giving preference to o metal bond in the enolate now coming to the cross aldol reaction so generally this reaction is giving as earlier we discussed this reaction giving cis and anti products that means unequal ratio of diastereomers in the reaction so because of this unequal ratio of diastereomers in this aldol reaction so generally this reaction is diastereo selective reaction diastereo selective reaction there are three different kind of aldol reactions we can observe that is simple diastereo selective reactions diastereo facial selective reactions and double diastereo selective reactions when will we get this di simple diastereo selective reaction when you have both substrates aldehyde and enolate both are achiral which we discussed earlier achiral aldehyde and achiral enolate generally gives you simple diastereo selectivity whereas the second one diastereo facial selectivity where one of the substrate should be chiral either aldehyde should be chiral or enolate should be chiral that is diastereo facial selectivity in this case you will get a high selectivity you will observe high selectivity in this whereas in this diastereo simple diastereo selectivity you will observe compared to this diastereo facial selectivity you will get less you will observe less kind of stereo selectivity diastereo selectivity let us come to third one that is double diastereo selectivity where both substrates chiral that is aldehydes are chiral as well as enolates are chiral so let us discuss the first one that is simple diastereo selectivity this is already we have discussed in the previous video that is simple diastereo selection that is com combination of achiral aldehyde and achiral enolate which gives you diastereo selective aldol products either syn or anti in this we have discussed different kind of uh, combinations especially we have treated this aldehyde with the enolates that enolates generally z and e enolates achiral enolates whereas z enolate generally prefers syn always 
sin specificity whereas e inhalers gives always anti diastereomer so this simple diastereo selection where the acryl aldehyde and acryl that is z acryl inhalate gives you sin majorly whereas e acryl inhalate gives you anti majorly that means we are using different kind of inhalates in this simple diastereo selective reaction what are the inhalates we are using in this reaction that is lithium inhalates boron inhalates and silyl enol ethers so all these conditions the diastereo selective outcome of this reaction generally rationalized by zimmermann traxler transition state which we discussed in previous video so all these cases so lithium inhalates this lithium inhalates we have discussed in the previous video where the inhalates we have prepared from the corresponding carbonyl compounds by abstracting with the lithium base and treated with acryl aldehyde and obtained two diastereomers in unequal ratio this reaction sometimes highly stereo selective that means stereo specific to and this stereo specificity is generally depends on the the group present in the enolate reaction is not always completely stereo specific but in these cases cis and trans stereo chemistry of the enolate not transfer directly to a similar ratio of sin and anti products especially in this lithium enolates the cis enolates are more selective and they give sin diastereomer major whereas trans inhalates gives you anti diastereomer majorly among this cis and trans inhalates cis inhalate is highly selective than trans inhalates in this lithium inhalates the second one is boron inhalates this boron inhalates compare with by compare with the lithium inhalates these are highly stereo selective than lithium inhalates of course this reaction is highly stereo specific that means cis boron inhalate gives you sin aldol product whereas trans gives you anti aldol product so this is highly stereo specific compared to lithium and also the stereo specificity that means here the diastereo mass formation generally rationalized by zimmermann traxler transition state what is the reason behind the more selectivity of this boron inhalates compared to lithium the reason is the bond the shorter bond bo bond in the bonal boron inhalates when compared with the lithium oxygen bond the applications of this boron inhalates in aldol reaction gives you highly stereo selective and stereo specific so we need to know about the preparation of boron inhalates so how to prepare this boron inhalates the treatment of carbonyl compounds generally with the boron halides boron halides x x may be halides chlorine or something or you can treat with the triflates okay dialkyl boron dialkyl boron halides are triflates so if you treat this carbonyl compounds with the dialkyl boron halides or triflates in the presence of esterically hindered tertiary amines like triethylamine or diisopropyl ethylamine you will get cis boron inhalate majorly when you treat this with the carbonyl compounds as we discussed earlier this gives you the sin product majorly because it is highly stereo specific where the cis boron inhalate gives you sin dash to the mer majorly so under this conditions the cis boron inhalates are formed high with the high stereo selectivity the other inhalates 
or silyl enol ethers. So how to prepare this silyl enol ethers? Treatment of this carbonyl compound with a strong base like a lithium diisopropyl amide. As we know, this diisopropyl amide, lithium diisopropyl amide is non-nucleophilic base. It doesn't act as a nucleophile only it abstracts the proton proton from here and which gives you a kinetic enolate followed by if you treat this with the trimethyl silyl fluoride where this sil silicon is electrophilic so which attacked by the nucleophile gives you sorry in this condition generally you will observe C alkylation and O alkylation but the two alkylations that means C R O nucleophil key, nucleophilicity is depends on the hard hard and the soft to soft interactions whereas the C is carbon is soft nucleophile and this oxygen is this oxygen is hard nucleophile so this hard oxygen generally interact with this hard electrophile silyl so that you will get O silylation majorly so this gives you silyl enol ethers so there is enol which has silyl group so that this is called silyl enol ethers so this silyl enol ethers are a good source for nucleophiles but they are not that much nucleophilic they are less nucleophilic than boron and lithium enolates and they do not react with the directly carbonyl compounds that means you need to activate this nucleophiles by using a Lewis acid this Lewis acid complexation generally increases the electrophilicity of the aldehydes which is sufficient to allow the reaction for example you have a less nucleophilic species followed by you have another aldehyde so any reaction if you want to continue you should have either one of these species should be more reactive highly reactive so this silyl enol ether is less nucleophilic so that what you do you just take a Lewis acid which activate this Lewis acid suppose for example I am taking BF3 boron trifluoride which activates this electrophilic center which makes this reaction perform well that is the reason the combination of Lewis acid with the silyl enol ethers works well and of course as nucleophilicity the stereoselectivity of this reaction also very low so this is all about the first one that is simple diastereo selection using acheral aldehyde and acheral enolates the second one is diastereofacial selectivity That means this reaction in this aldol reaction, the diastereoselective formation is depends on the phase, the pi phase present in the substrate. So this determines the stereochemical outcome of the aldol reaction. In this case, we are going to discuss about the combination of chiral aldehyde and a chiral enolate. So, this order reaction, as we know, generally produce syn and anti diastereomers in an equal ratio, so that this can also called as diastereo selective reaction but in this case you have a chiral aldehyde a chiral aldehyde which is having a phase 
that means it has a planar part that phase generally determines the uh, stereoselective outcome of the action to get this to control this absolute stereochemistry of the reaction we have three different kind of methods the first one is substrate controlled reaction second one is auxiliary controlled reaction third one is reagent controlled reaction what is substrate controlled as i told you any reaction which produce unequal ratio of stereoisomers in which one of the starting materials must be chiral either substrate or reagent or solvent anything so any one of the starting materials either substrate reagent or anything so any one of the starting materials must be chiral so in the substrate controlled reactions substrate is chiral that means substrate is already having a chirality this chirality in the substrate generally determines the outcome stereochemical outcome of the reaction in a simple way we can say chiral substrate chiral substrate is responsible for the formation of unequal ratio of chiral stereoisomers chiral substrate produce a produce unequal ratio of chiral stereoisomers so that reaction is called substrate controlled asymmetric synthesis whereas in another case auxiliary control you have to use an optically active molecule which should attach to the substrate to make it as chiral suppose if you have a chiral substrate you add auxiliary which is an optically active compound to make this a chiral substrate to become a chiral because of this auxiliary with this complex or with this chiral auxiliary combined substrate involved in reaction and produce unequal ratio of chiral stereoisomers what is happened completely here the chiral auxiliary is responsible for the formation of unequal ratio what is chiral auxiliary which is an external substance that means that is pure optically pure substance which add to the substrate substrate during the reaction after the reaction which is easily detachable from the reaction so that is actually chiral auxiliary the finally chiral reagent is a responsible for the formation of unequal ratio let us discuss about the first one that means we are discussing about chiral aldehyde that means chiral substrate which is responsible for the formation of unequal ratio of chiral stereoisomers that means here in this case the stereoisomers so let us discuss about substrate control so in this case substrate controlled reaction we are using chiral aldehyde and a chiral enolate so one of the starting metals is chiral that is substrate is chiral so let us consider a molecule which is having a chiral center r2 r3 r4 if it has a chiral center so this substrate is already having a chiral center so this is chiral substrate when you treat this with the nucleophile in this case the chiral enolate is a nucleophile which produce unequal ratio of stereoisomers so what kind of stereoisomers they are these two are diastereomers so in these two diastereomers one of the diastereomer is major so that is actually substrate controlled reaction 
in this case we have the substrate is chiral that means substrate already have a chiral center this substrate induced the stereoselectivity in this prochiral center so this is called prochiral center this is prochiral center that means hypothetical addition of hypothetical addition of any nucleophile onto this phase which generates diastereomers as the products so that means this is called a diastereotopic phase diastereotope phase so it is a phase that is plan planar part of the molecule generally called as phase okay there are two different type of phase you have either re phase or c phase so either re phase top phase or whatever bottom phase so these two phases attacked by the nucleophile produce different kind of diastereomers in unequal ratio okay that means you are converting this prochiral to chiral so as we mentioned earlier this is a diastereo facial selective reaction that means this complete stereo selective outcome is depends on the phase this diastereotopic phase either the attack of this nucleophile by v phase or c phase so what is here what is substrate control here that means your substrate one of the substrate that is aldehyde is chiral that means that aldehyde possess alpha stereogenic center which determines the stereo chemical output that means the stereo control is completely depends on the so this is alpha position so the stereo chemical output or outcome is completely depends on the substrates the groups attached to the stereogenic center this is stereogenic center and the reaction conditions what we are using in this reaction so this completely determines the formation of diastereomers so this reaction is diastereo selective reaction where the total outcome is depends on the phase okay phase of the substrate so it is diastereotopic facial selective reaction so in this substrate control we have only one aldehyde there is one substrate is chiral there is chiral aldehyde and a chiral enolate so in this substrate control that means in this diastereo facial selective reaction the stereochemical output is completely rationalized by using felkin on transition state have you observed that in simple diastereo selection that means the combination of a chiral aldehyde and a chiral enolate where the enolates like lithium or boron enolates generally the stereochemical output is completely rationalized by Zimmerman Traxler transition state but in this case chiral aldehyde and a chiral enolate case this can rationalize the stereo outcome using felkin on transition state let us discuss by taking an example so this is an example where the chiral aldehyde and a chiral enolate combination which gives you two different kind of diastereomers that is syn as well as anti one of the diastereomer is major this complete diastereo selective outcome is depends upon the groups or the yeah the groups which is present at the stereo stereogenic centers which is alpha position to uh, aldehyde in the chiral substrate and also the reaction conditions what we are using in the reaction and this stereochemical output either syn or anti diastereomer diastereomers completely depends that is completely rationalized by using felkin on model felkin on model so let us take this example where the derivative of acetaldehyde but this has a chiral the stereogenic center this is phenyl acetaldehyde substituted phenyl acetaldehyde once you treat with the chiral enolate that means lithium enolate lithium enolate in th of at minus 78 degrees celsius 
which is producing the sin and anti diastereomers so the sin and the anti is generally by considering this r group r group with this oh we can describe the sin and the anti and we can observe the formation of sin and anti diastereomers depends on the r group present in this stereogenic center that is in chiral aldehyde when you have methyl group you are getting sin product is major when you have ethyl it is increased to 86 percent when you have isopropyl it is increased to 70 whereas when you have tertiary butyl the anti product is major okay so this reaction generally rationalize rationalize by using felkin arm model here if you observe this there are two four different kind of felkin arm models a b c and d where this a and this d generally gives you sin diastereomer formation and b and c transition states generally gives you anti diastereomer let us discuss either a or d which gives you sin diastereomer preferably let us take our chiral substrate where r is methyl okay. this is chiral aldehyde and treat with a chiral enolate so we will get a sin and anti diastereomers in which one of the diastereomer is major that is depends on the transition state let us write the felkin on transition state for this aldehydes before that let us write the cramps model for this so if you want to write a cramps model first observer has to observe from the aldehyde side that means the aldehyde will get a front side that means it is a front carbon so the front carbon has a c double bond bow and h and if you observe exactly towards this carbonyl the ph phenyl group is and phenyl group and this carbonyl are present at the plane so that this c double bond o always lies exactly opposite to this large group so we have to consider these three groups in the stereogenic center like a small and large and this phenyl is large and hydrogen is small and methyl is medium according to cramps model this c double bond o should be flanked by medium and small groups and the c l bond should be always opposite to this c double bond o what we are discussing now it is cramps model according to cramps model the cl bond should be always opposite to the c double bond o and the small and the medium group should be flanked the c double bond o is flanked by small and medium groups once you draw this cramps model so generally cramps model is also acceptable for the formation of the stereo stereo isomers in the reaction but still there is a drawback present in that where in this eclipsed eclipsed form so these two large group and the front carbon substituent both are in eclipse and they have a sterical repulsion so still they are feeling a sterical repulsion due to this reason so another scientists like felkin and on felkin and on proposed another model felkin and on proposed a model to release complete steric repulsions between these substituents so that the incoming nucleophile can approach this 
carbonyl carbon without facing steatical repulsions. So how to convert this grams to felkin? See as usual the front carbon is C double bond bond H but this Cl bond to remove the steric interactions between these two substituents in the eclipser form. So what we have to do is just rotate this either clockwise or anti-clockwise which should come exactly perpendicular to this C double bond O. I am rotating now clockwise this phenyl. When you rotate this in clockwise, this phenyl is coming here and this methyl goes off, goes to here and H will come here. So if you observe carefully, carefully, so complete sterical, there is no sterical repulsions. That means this substrate is completely sterically free in this model. So that's why Felkin on model is acceptable for the nucleophilic addition reactions in carbonyl compounds in asymmetric reactions there are two possibilities here you can rotate to clockwise or you can rotate it to anti-clockwise if you rotate anti-clockwise like this phenyl will get will come to here exactly which is perpendicular to this and methyl will come here and h will come here so there are two possibilities you will get when you convert this Krams to felkin -Hahn model but among these two models so here see there are two hydrogens which are small and they feel less sterical in repulsions compared to this model so comparatively this model is the preferable transfer state than this one so we will further continue with the, the first model so this transfer state is preferable for the reaction so this is one of the transition states that is felkin on transition states now your substrate is completely free from sterical repulsions it is ready for nucleophile addition so you have another nucleophile in your starting material that is enolate enolate right so now this enolate is attack it should attack this nucleophile has to attack opposite to this cl bond so according to felkin model the cl bond should be perpendicular to this and then this nucleophile has to attack opposite to this cl bond Once it attack, this is the front carbon attacked by nucleophile. The back carbon already has three substrates. convert this to wedge we have CH2 C double bond over special bitter and then we are viewing from this side this is in staggered position so I am already drawing to a staggered and this front carbon has a keto group here followed by a OH which is near to the observer so OH will come near to the observer and then back carbon methyl also near to observer and then which is connected to Phenyl. 
get to phenyl. So here we are considering this R which is methyl as a substrate so that this methyl and this OH are in syn. So this filkin on model is preferably gives you preferably gives you syn product. That means there are four different type of possibilities, four different type of filkin on transitive possibilities we have. So in that we are discussing one filkin on model which gives you syn product, syn diastereomer preferably. So the first Felkin on model, first Felkin on model A which gives you syn, syn diastereomer majorly. How it happened we have discussed in the mechanism. So another case B and C Felkin on models generally gives you anti-selectivity. Let us discuss with one of the Felkin on model here. Let us take a B, B Felkin on model and uh, let us discuss about the anti selectivity here. Again, take your substrate that is phenyl acetaldehyde with the chiral aldehyde. Now, as usual. Take one more Felkin on model that is B, where C and large group is perpendicular to this C double bond work. So, this is Felkin on transition state B. So, what happens when this reaction? proceeds via this Felkin on transition B model. Let us start with the nucleophile addition. So nucleophile adding here. Let us write that side that is H R and this Tacked by CH, CO, so we have a little bit and H, O, H. Again, observe, we have observed from this side and right. So, so CH2, CO, that's a little bit of a friend carbon. This is friend carbon, so we are doing from this side. And CH2 CO CH3 where is observing this OH towards the side and the back carbon back carbon has phenyl and this hydrogen is observing by the observer whereas this R is methyl right this is methyl this methyl is back side so that means this OH and methyl which are in anti position that means this Felkin on transition model B generally gives you anti diastereomer majorly. So we have taken two Felkin on models that is model A and we obtained the sin diastereomer and the model B which is giving anti diastereomer already we have discussed that the formation of this diastereomers in this reaction generally depends on the substituents presented presented this chiral aldehyde chiral aldehyde chiral aldehyde that means this R when it is methyl the syn ethyl syn 
isopropyl syn is preferable whereas tertiary butyl and T is preferable and the reaction conditions what you are using also depends that is which determines the stereochemical outcome this is the first case that is you, when you are taking lithium enolates coming to the second case the same chiral aldehyde when you are treating with the silyl enol ethers which are also nucleophiles but not that much nucleophilic than your lithium or boron enolates so that to interact with this carbonyl what you have to do you have to make this electrophilic carbon more reactive so that's why you are using bf3 diethylate here which bf3 diethylate makes complex with this and makes this electrophilic carbon more reactive to the nucleophile so this reaction also gives you the syn and the anti dash tumors where the syn dash tumor is obtained majorly in this reaction though it is less stereo specific already we have discussed compared to this uh, lithium and uh, boron enolates but in this case you are getting syn enolate is major because you are taking a complex a complexing agent that is bf3 to make this aldehydes more reactive and of course you can also yes these are the models what we have discussed earlier cramps model and felkinon model so in this cramps model when this carbonyl has a stereogenic center which can have three different type of substrates small medium large so according to cram this c double bond should be flanked by small and medium and c the large group should be always far away to this uh, c double bond o and nucleophile preferably attack from the always small side which is feel which feels less sterical repulsions okay that product will be the major always and uh, when you convert to falcon on so to remove the sterical hindrance between this eclipse the r and the large substrate we are just uh, rotating this uh, cl bond which is perpendicular to this c double bond o so that there is no steric repulsions with any atom and you are getting two different type of uh, models here transfer states so where this small and uh, this alkyl group will have less sterical repulsions so that's why this is favored model whereas in this case you are feeling both the medium and the r which are feeling good sterical interactions so that's why you are to this model is less favorable so what all product you are getting to from this model that is major in this reactions so that's why we are preferring felkin arm models in diastereo phase selective reactions so there is another example where the chiral enolate chiral uh, sorry chiral aldehyde you can treat with the enolates especially z enolate which is preferably prepared by that is prepared from lithium lithium bases so lithium enolates where z enolate if you treat with z enolate as we know z enolates or cis enolates gives you syn product majorly enolate gives you anti product majorly so this z will give a syn here see syn product majorly whereas as we know that if you follow the felkin norm models you will get one of the products major that is syn so in this case z means you will you are getting syn commonly syn commonly but see these two sorry these two syn as we discussed in the earlier a chiral aldehyde and a chiral kinolate in our case so the syn is major here because z enolate so whereas here also you are getting syn but only thing is the uh, felkin that is the reaction proceeds via which kind of uh, transition state that that gives you either syn or anti okay syn or anti so this syn or anti is depends on the this stereochemical output is depends on the the transition state which involved in the reaction okay in this case you are getting 86% of syn syn over the syn anti so that means this reaction produce with the z enolate syn product majorly so you can also find the felkin arm model which followed which followed in this reaction okay in this example okay in another case there is another chiral aldehyde if you treat with z enolate of course this reaction gives you syn anti syn anti product majorly compared to syn syn so that means this reaction follows one more different kind of felkin arm model to get this stereochemical output
Thank you.